Grade 8 math number 13.3b, volume of a sphere. We're going to find the volume of a sphere using a formula. A sphere, remember the pH says pha, like an F sound, sphere, is a three-dimensional figure like a ball. All the points that make up its surface are the same distance from the center. We covered this in the last video, but I'm going to go over it again. A sphere cut in half is a hemisphere. It's a half of a sphere. We got like our Earth, we'd have a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. And if you go from the very center point out to the edge, that's the radius. But it goes out in an infinite amount of directions, in all directions, up, diagonal. And it's the same distance. The radius from the center to the edge is the same distance no matter what direction you go because it's a ball. And if we put our sphere inside of a cylinder that has the same height, and the same diameter, which means it's got the same radius, the height is going to be two radii. See? Here's one radius, we'd have another radius, and that would be the height, no matter which way we turned it. See? So two of the radii would be equal to the height of the cylinder if they had the same height and same diameter. And the center point to the edge is the radius, and we can see it for the cylinder and for the sphere. Well, as we learned in our last video, a sphere has two-thirds the volume of a cylinder with the same height and radius. We also learned that we can use the formula V volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. Now, if you didn't see the last video, it was 13.3a, and there's a link to it in the description of the video you're watching now. We use this to find the volume of a sphere. Now, you can also use volume equals two-thirds pi r squared h. And we've talked about this several times. This is the volume for a cylinder. The pi r squared is the base times the height. And a cone is one-third of a cylinder, and a sphere is two-thirds of a cylinder. So we could just stick a one-third or a two-third in here to do the cone or the sphere. But as we saw in the last video, we're going to use four-thirds pi r cubed. Now, because a diameter is two times the radius, we can use the formula just like this one. Instead of radius, we can put diameter divided by two and then put it in parentheses with the cubed on the outside. Now, if you don't understand about this, you need to see video 13.2b, and there'll be a link for this one in the description of the video you're watching. So if we have the diameter instead of the radius, we can do this, okay? So real quick explanation, the reason it's in parentheses is if we didn't have it in parentheses, that means we would be cubing the diameter and not the two that we're dividing it by, see? We need to cube the entire thing, so we put it in parentheses, okay? If you don't understand, you really need to watch that video, okay? Now, this V volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed is a theorem for the volume of a sphere. And we've talked about theorems and axioms and postulates and definitions for proof. So to find the volume of a sphere and round the answer to the nearest tenth, here's our theorem, our formula for the volume of a sphere. Here's our sphere, and it's got a 2.1 centimeter radius. So we plug the numbers in, and we've got 4 thirds times 3.14 for pi. and that needs to be multiplied by the radius cubed, 2.1 cubed, right? So this is going to be the 2.1 cubed, all right? Well, that means we've got 4 thirds times 3.14 times 9.261, 9 and 261 thousandths. I multiplied 2.1 by 2.1, and I got 4.41, and then I had to multiply that by 2.1 to get the cubed, and there were three hops in the equation. I put three hops in the product, and I got 9.261. See? So now we need to multiply these together. Well, 4 thirds times pi comes out to 12.56 over 3. We need to multiply that to our 2.1 cubed product, and we get 4.18 for this. See? 12.56 divided by 3. Remember, fractions are little division problems. It came out as 4.18, and it kept going on, but we only need to go to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to multiply this 4.18 times the 9.261. And the reason I'm not doing it to the tenths right now is 
I want it to be accurate. And if I start rounding now, my answer won't be as accurate. If I do this multiplication, get my answer, and then round it, it's going to be more accurate, okay? So I did this big <laughs> multiplication. Didn't take very long. There's five decimal hops in the equation, so I put five decimal hops in the answer, and I got 38.7 to the nearest tenth. So it's 38.7 cubic centimeters. Now it's approximate because of pi. Remember, pi has so many digits, we just round it to 3.14, so there's no way that it's accurate. It's got to be approximate. So that means the volume is 38.7 cubic centimeters. Now, what if we had uh, the diameter? We didn't have the radius. If the radius is 2.1 centimeters, like this shows, the diameter is 4.2. So we could have put it so that, like I explained here, we could have put the 4.2 diameter over 2, so it would be divided by 2 to get the radius, and then cubed. See? So we would have had the same answer. 2.1 cubed is still 9.261. So it would have been the same answer, but we would have written it in this way, see, if we had the diameter instead of the radius. Now, be really careful. I want you to remember this, to be careful to notice if you're given the radius or the diameter. It makes a huge difference. Is it giving you the whole thing or just half of it? If it's half, it's the radius, okay? If it's the whole thing, it's the diameter, and we need to write the equation that way, okay? So, that's finding the volume of a sphere using a formula. I hope it was helpful. We're going to talk about doing this in a real-life problem, a real-life situation in the next video, okay? Let me show you how you can use it in, the, in a real-world context, all right? I'll see you next video. Keep trying. Keep up the good work. Bye.